we are grateful that you stuck with us this morning. Now, moving away from coronavirus, let's switch our attention to some topics or something that's got to do with education that we are all concerned about. Education is very or has always been very important in this country. And the MPP as a party in 2016 and 2020 came out with a large manifesto that was also focusing on education. Now, a Get Fund project to accommodate pupils of the Kualum Primary School in the Northern Region has not been in use since its completion. Pupils and teachers now endure harsh conditions during tuition. A report by Stanley Niblo is about to roll out. Let's take a look. Kualum is a community located about 12 kilometers from Kwandai, the district capital in the Northern Region. The primary school situated on the outskirts of the community serves four adjoining villages. But not all pupils who acquire formal basic education here do so easily because the community provided makeshift sheds sheltering them are without furniture. Few locks in here have been provided by the teachers to pupils on a first come first serve basis. But even with that, pupils are cramped, disregarding the physical distancing protocol. Pupils have had to endure this condition for years. The other section of the school also has similar challenges. Teachers and some lower primary pupils perform academic work under trees. Classes end abruptly whenever it threatens to rain. This prompted Get Fund to construct a decent classroom block for the school. The project has, however, been completed but has been under lock and key for more than five months. Chairman of the Parents Teacher Association, who expressed worry about the condition endured by the pupils, said parents cannot do much. The meeting, education office. We've called several PT meetings and went to the education office and the district assembly, informing them about the condition of the children, and nothing had been done. But because of that, our children cannot dress well and come to school since they are coming to sit on the bare floor. District Chief Executive Fokbandai, Emmanuel Atta Tatablata, indicated plans are in place to hand over the school to the community, calling on the parents to be patient. We know the land under some condition that uh, we are not too happy, but we manage it until the project is completely fixed or done. So when they go, they will know that yes, it's forever for them. Contractor hadn't finished, but because of the agent need of the facility, you say I'm going to stay there. It doesn't work that way. You need to have patience. He indicated differences among beneficiary communities over the siting of the school is also being addressed. For pupils, their zeal to contribute their quota to the development of society urges them on. They defy the odds to be in school each day. With a tube of yam, they are okay to withstand the day's work. Far to roast the yam is set few meters away from the school while classes are in session. The people seek permission from their teachers to attend to the yam in order to prevent it from burning. The people's concentration in class is slow as they shift the attention to the roasted yam. When the yam is ready, it is shared with other pupils who come to school on an empty stomach. Poverty is rife in this part of the country. Providing quality education for pupils of Palung and its adjoining settlement will largely depend on the commitment of stakeholders. All right, yes, and of course, we're tracking the promises in the manifestos, and today we're having a conversation about education. Now, our mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with funding from UK Aid and the European Union. And joining us this morning, we have Mr. Kofi Asari. He is uh, the Executive Director of Africa Education Watch. Good morning, sir, and you're welcome. Hi, good morning, and good right. morning to your cherished viewers. Certainly, and I hope you're well. Now, also joining us is Mr. Palham Kwesi Oyeye. He's the Executive of GNECA, the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition. Good morning to you, sir. Sorry, if you can unmute yourself, it looks as if you have, yeah. 
All right. Good so morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning to you and good morning to the church listeners. You're welcome and to you as well. You're welcome to the conversation. Now, I'll start off with Mr. Kofi Asari because talking about education, I mean, you've also been very vocal about it. We just played a video of, of you know, children who unfortunately are not getting access to quality education. And of course, uh, when education became rife with the MPP promising um, in their manifesto, they talked about making sure that not only will they provide access, they'll provide equity and equality. Have we seen that so far in the policies that have been rolled out by the ruling government? Mr. Kofi Asari, can you hear me? Okay, let me just move on to Mr. Oyeye, if you can answer the same question for me, sir. For some reason... Mr. Oyeye, can you hear okay, us? Okay, so thank you very yeah. much. Yes, I can hear you. Can carry you hear on, me please. Too? Yes, loud and clear. Please carry on. Yeah, so in terms of uh, access and equity, this has been the construct that within the educational setting, which we have been discussing for quite a good time now, and we expected that prior to the elections, political parties trying to ascend to, um, to, to, to lead a country, mm. try to ensure within their manifestos, they properly enshrine issues about access and equity. So in terms of access, then we are looking at how many schools do we have in each community that will match against the population of school going age within mm. the communities. Then we are looking at distance between the schools. We are looking at uh, in terms of uh, equity, are we trying to focus on all persons that are school going age, including marginalized persons and persons living with disability? And then how equitable is educational resources across all the levels? Mm -hmm. Carry on, sir. Are you done? Yeah, so it's important that within the manifestos of the parties that vie for political leadership, mm -hmm. i.e., some captured it that, yes, they were going to scale up infrastructure within the school sector, within the educational sector, a busy school. Mm -hmm. And as we speak now, we have close to a closer infrastructure deficit of 16%, mm -hmm. which we think that the government, as they've come into power now, should be able to work on mm -hmm. when the substantive uh, minister is sworn into office. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the issues that we want government to pay attention to. Basically, if you look at the video, that was it, we realized that since time in memoria, this community is deficient of a decent school. Mm. The children do not have any table furniture to work with. Mm. The classroom itself is not conducive. Mm. We saw, in short, the undulating nature of the school field and how motivating would it be for the teachers even working within that sector. So it's important that then come the government of the day would ensure that they restore to the various communities what is deserving as a school setting, mm. which will accommodate all children of school going age within the basic sector. Okay, so Mr. Sari, thank you for, for that submission. But in your estimation, this 16% of schools or um, 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 deficits, uh, uh, exactly, yeah. that, that we now have to get to. In the next four years, how soon do you think a school like uh, Palum in the northern region would have equity and access to very good quality education? Well, um, I think it is our expectation. Mr. Kofi Asari, if you can just yeah, also, yeah, yes, yeah, please, yeah. please so, turn your um, phone I because that, Mr. Kofi Asari, you know, so your head is pointing to the side and so we cannot clearly see. So if you can just Put your phone on auto rotate. Is it correct? Kindly auto rotate <laughs> the phone, please. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Is it okay. Yes, yeah. it's okay. Carry on. Is it okay? Is it okay? Yes. All right. I was making the point that, you know, um, in the past four years, mm. we we haven't seen um, a comment. I mean, 
adequate financing of education at the basic level mm. when it comes to infrastructure. Um, mainly because of the attention that went to the free senior high school infrastructural expansion projects. Mm. We built over 1,000 projects in um, secondary schools, and we built less than 200 um, projects in, 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 in at the basic level. Okay. And so one appreciates that with the announcement of the end to the double track system, yes. which more or less means that with an appreciable expansion in infrastructure at the secondary level, um, in the next four years should witness a more um, prioritized focus on expanding and improving the quality of basic education infrastructure. Bear in mind that the Ministry of Education secured um, a 1.5 billion loan, which is securitized with part of the get fund. And um, I think less than a quarter of the money has actually been disbursed so far. And so we are expecting that a lot of the remainder of the 1.5 billion loan should go into expanding and improving the quality of basic education infrastructure in the next four years. All right. But how much harm was done the lower levels? Because again, uh, as we all know, the NPP in its 2016 manifesto heavily focused on free SHS, and that was one of their major campaign promises as well. And over time, we all talked about how the lower levels suffered as a result. We've talked about infrastructure and how about 1,000 uh, buildings were put up for the secondary school level and less than 200 for the lower primary. But what other kind of harm was done these younger ones? Mm. Because a lot of issues have crept up as a result of focusing on free SHS and, of course, ensuring that we have more students gain access to the secondary level. Is that mine? Yes, you can take it and I'll go to Mr. Yee afterwards. Yeah, you know, um, it, is, it, is, it is important to affirm that mm -hmm. in as much as free secondary education um, is, is a flagship of the ruling government and it's important, you know, uh, within the context of education as a right and our advanced OSS SDG 4 by 2030. Um, the issue is not necessarily, from our angle, it's not necessarily about which one is more important over mm. the other or which one should rank higher on the importance mm. angle, um, ladder um, from the political perspective. Unfortunately, this has been the case in the past four years, mm -hmm. probably because you know the second term of the current president heavily did, was heavily dependent on a promise, not necessarily a policy, but then a policy that was... Um, occasioned by a promise, mm. which, which was a highly contentious political promise then. And so with the politics of the free senior high school you know, relatively detached from, from, from that policy, having a more policy spectacle or policy, uh, policy look mm. uh, would give us the sense that it is important for us to approach all our educational needs inclusively and with equity and that is why if you look at the manifesto there was a lot of promises in the area of improving the quality of basic education mm, yes. even though it didn't break down the meaning of projects like gallop which is investing about 200 plus million dollars mm -hmm. in uh, in upgrading the quality of education in about 10,000 low performing basic schools and um other projects that were mentioned in the manifesto, mm -hmm. they, may, they may not have been broken down for us to appreciate that this gallop means A, B, C, D, E. But then if you move into the, the, the de details of most of these interventions proposing them to manifest, you come to a realization that we are moving, we are moving from an era where free seniors who dominated government policy, government expenditure, mm -hmm. you know, and government priority attention to an era where we are going to have a more equitable and inclusive disbursement of resources because the fundamentals of the free senior high school, which is almost a $3 billion intervention per year, mm. have been sufficiently built in terms of the infrastructure, which requires a high initial investment. And that will, in, in essence, you know, free to an extent resources that would have been otherwise invested in capital expenditure to, to, um, to develop capital expenditure in basic and then other 
um, post-secondary sector, especially in the College of Education, where we are still struggling with the numbers um, due to COVID. Mm. Mr. Iye, what would you say to this particular question as well? Hello? We can yeah. hear you, sir. Carry on. Hello? We can hear you. Yes. Can you, can you repeat? Well, so what I had asked, Mr. Um, you know, I had asked was that basically we've noticed, of course, over time that in the 2016 manifesto, free SHS was uh, one of the main promises. And as a result, over the four years, we saw how that adversely affected the basic level education, mm -hmm. not only with regards to infrastructure. So what level of damage was done the lower level? And is this something that we can repair in the next four years, looking at the promises that have been made in the 2020 manifesto? Yeah, so it is agreeably uh, noted that, yes, uh, the current government in the past four years actually made free SHS the flagship program. And therefore, having gone through the process and now, we are all quite happy that uh, the double track system has been struck off. Mm. It's our expectation that government really direct attention to the basic school. In the last budget, of uh, 2020, 2019, mm. the government projected that we were going to construct over 1,800 kindergartens. Mm. Unfortunately, by the end of their four year term, they constructed a little below the 4,000. Mm. They, they, they constructed a little below 1,000. Mm. And uh, this is really worrying because we expect that in trying to look and redirect attention to basic education, which is the foundation before any child transits into the senior high, then it's as expectation that having put a very comprehensive curriculum, like the standard-based curriculum, and then currently mm. the Common Core program training that is ongoing for JHS and the senior high, we expect that the foundation, which is the basic school, should be well strengthened. And in doing that, we want to direct our attention basically and primarily mm. to infrastructure improvement, inspection of schools still under tree. Let mm. us try as much as possible to get rid of schools mm. under trees. The mm. children there deserve a decent school with bright pictures, with teaching learning material, with qualified teachers. And the one that we witness, the community that we witness in the video that you air, is mm -hmm. not an isolated one. Mm. We still have numerous schools under trees dotted around the countryside. And it's expected that anything within our uh, communities, the urban areas and the peri urban areas, will witness that there are other schools that even are overpopulated and are running shift. Yet, we have schools that have been newly constructed that are still under lock no. and key mm -hmm. because government has not been able also to pay mm. the contractors. Now we have source funding, we have the grant, we have taken loan to construct this facility in order to ease the population and then grant access. So what is the wisdom or the rationale behind constructing a new six unit classroom block for the basic school and the junior high and it's still undeveloped and key when we cannot pay the contractor so this is also another discussion that we can look at on a different level to bring to the attention of government to fast track mm. the opening of all schools that have been constructed and then payment arrangement is facilitated for those contractors having said that it's important that having put a school up we need adequate furniture Mm. toilet facility water should be available okay. and we are saying that let us improve upon the water situation running in our schools okay. more importantly in this time of COVID mm. where we expect that the children should wash their hands under running water and so and they mm. should also have a decent toilet oh, yeah. in these are very key issues that we want to bring to the attention of government and going forward. Okay. They no, need to no, focus no. on ensuring no. that schools no. that are situated no. in communities have the full complement no. of 
what a school setting should look like. Okay. All right. In, in, in wrapping up, Mr. Sari, do you also agree that going forward, these promises must be implemented differently, especially when it comes to the basic schools? Yeah, I exactly. Um, you know, as we, as we begin to focus more on enhancing the quality of basic school infrastructure mm. and prioritizing things, we must take into cognizance the need to make more efficient the framework within which infrastructure development and financing is administered in this country. Okay. Parham has raised issues with a lot of schools across the country being completed and but, but still kept at a lock and key mm. due to contractual deficit, I mean contractual issues in relation to get fund. One school, for instance, that we have been working on to try and have have it have it released to the public is the OEB Presby Junior High School mm. and OEB Presby Primary. Both schools have been completed for, for four years and they've still been kept under lock and key due to contractual, I mean, contractual um, issues. There are so many of such schools. You see, if we spend the taxpayers' money in building schools only for the schools to be kept under lock and key for four years just because a particular political dispensation is not motivated to pay a particular contractor because perhaps the previous or a different political dispensation awarded the contract. Okay. Well, all we do is to play politics and allow the citizenry to suffer. Okay. Those who suffer the brand of such selfish decisions are not the politicians. <laughs> they are the ordinary people, the man on the, the man on the street. They are the people whose children suffer, you know, the brand. So if you go to any Presby Junior High School now, they are running 17 in a class, 18 in a class, because there's a huge deficit that has been going for four mm, years mm. due to politics and then contractual issues. And so we need to strengthen the administration of the GET Fund, mm -hmm. bring in more efficiency, make the GET Fund more accountable and as much as possible ensure cost efficiency mm. in the procurement of infrastructure. Okay. We are CSOs that are procuring six unit classroom blocks with 300,000 students. Government is procuring say with close to 500,000 students. In some instances, 600,000 cities, depending on the government agency. We need to standardize the costing framework for education infrastructure. That is the only way we can ensure that instead of using 400, 900,000 Ghana cities to build two six unit classroom blocks, we can actually use SAME to build three six okay. unit classroom blocks to ensure that as much as possible, the rural child is more. Okay. I mean, the rural child's interest is played ahead of, you know, the. the the procurement and, and, and political interest when it comes to contracting of schools. So these are the issues we I think we need to resolve within the framework of education, infrastructure financing okay. and, and, and management if we really want to achieve a lot in, 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 in eliminating schools and at trees and providing a decent environment for teaching and learning to take place in the next four years. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Yes. We appreciate your time this morning. Mr. Kofiasari, he's the Executive Director, Africa Education Watch. And Mr. Palham Kwesi Oyeye, he is the Executive um, the executive of GNECC, Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition. And we've been talking um, campaign promises 2016 to 2020 and how far they have been fulfilled when it comes to equity and access to education. This is still TV3 New Day. We'll be right back with a lot more.